Hi, I'm Mariana Danielovich with Hollywood Portfolio, and we're here with Mark Politi um, at Digital Hollywood Spring 2012. And uh, Mark is a, a public relations uh, executive, who runs his own firm, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what is happening at Digital Hollywood this year, so far. So far. Um, I just sat in on a panel with. Um, some uh, people that were talking about uh, entertainment content from Viacom and from uh, Doctor Who and from uh, um, Tumblr. They were talking about how brands actually use social media and use um, internet content in a proper way to sort of um, make their fans, you know, uh, want to get more into the brands. And that was very interesting. Very interesting. How are they doing? They're doing good. I mean, I think that um, you know the brands are they're still. They're still challenged in terms of their um, managing their fan base online. Um, I was formerly vice president of Planet White Games at Mashon.com, and we were doing user-generated content six years ago. Um, so now that they don't, they want people to um, they want people to get involved in the storylines, but it's still the brands have intellectual property issues where they want to protect what their brand is, yet they want to help their fans get more into their, their shows, and films, and TV shows. So it's a challenge for both the brand to protect the intellectual property, but also let the fans actually you know, operate social media in a form that that's okay to the, the brand, so to speak. And that's so interesting because we had, I think, this discussion now for a decade. Like, what, are, what, what part of a, a movie or a television show would actually be allowed to be played with, if you like, with users, right. in order for users to be the brand ambassadors. Right. And uh, I mean, what at this point, who would want a piece back, you know, millions of pieces of content into the linear experience right. that they're promoting? So I, I'm, I'm just kind of fascinated as to what the issues may still be. I, um, I actually have a I, I, in the 90s, I worked on 175 feature films and TV shows. I worked on Spider-Man and Batman and, and Titanic, and little movies, like Titanic the Boat Sang. <laughs> um, but what happens is the brand, is the brand will, you know, a film is worked on for two years when a film comes out. And when the film comes out, they want to promote the brand and actually make it work. With Titanic, I was in a room with 12 marketers, and the movie was coming out in late December. It was $7 million over budget. It was going under. It was not happening on any level. Um, the guy sitting next to me at the, the meeting was producing the soundtrack. He thought he would sell not one record. This was a Celine Dion soundtrack that he didn't do. So yes, you don't really know from a brand what's going to actually work um, or not work. And so in, in entertainment, there are evergreen brands like Batman and Superman and Spider-Man and Star Wars. And then there's new films and TV shows that are coming out. Like the girl that was on the panel was from... Um, um, two Broke Girls. She's the writer on the show and she does social media for them. So even though that show is very big, is they're still trying to build their audience. And so she's was saying that there's one audience that watches the show on 8.30 you know, at night on television, but there's another audience that does social media and interacts with the brand. So they operate in a linear way and also in a fixed way when they see it on television. And so um, the, the, the movie studios are, are embracing social media in such a way that it helps their fan base to become a lot more um, you know, sneezers. They're the people that want to promote the brand on their own instead of having a, 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 an individual division of the studio. They have thousands of fans out there promoting the brand because they like it. And it's, it's pretty cool. It is cool. It seems like the studios and uh, producers in general can actually benefit from the social media today in terms of not being in a room like that wondering what's going to happen to a you know, hundred plus million investment. You know, they've, they've spent a lot of money on films and TV shows when they released the film and they're, they're very, very skeptical of social media because they're concerned that if people don't like the show they won't they will they will say bad things on, online. But what's interesting is that the fan base will be self policing. So there are some people that don't like certain shows, even the famous shows. But the, the the crowdsourcing of that fan base actually enables the fans to sort of promote themselves and the ones that are, don't like it, there's always people who don't like certain things. So it, it is fascinating how the technologies have enabled the studios to have a deeper reach. Now, before, I'm, 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 I just turned 50 yesterday, so I'm, I'm, I'm old. Well, happy Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I used to dance on American Bandstand back in the early 80s. 
so uh, that was super interesting. But so you've been in entertainment for a few years. A few years, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, but what's interesting is now the crowds, um, the crowdsourcing and social media enables individual brands or TV shows or, or even online web episodic television to have its own fan base. Back in the day, they had fan clubs. Now they just have social media groups. Which is much more efficient fan club. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's been interesting. So you see that as something that's developing in digital media that we're going to see more of? I think that smaller shows can actually get a footprint before, smaller shows and films can actually get a footprint in terms of media where they, before they were like locked into a studio where they couldn't stand above the fray. Big films like, you know, like you know, Harry Potter or uh, you know, Avatar, they have gigantic campaigns, but a small independent film before couldn't really get arrested. Now, because of social media, a small independent film or production company can have some major impact if they embrace the social media world, the digital world, by by um, by looking at the technologies and um, and sort of you know realizing how, how valuable social media is. Um, I also sit on the board of the Social Media Club Los Angeles, which is a nonprofit organization for social media people here in LA. I'm the publicist for the, the nonprofit, so we we, we, we actually. Of about 1,200 social media people here in Los Angeles that are uh, promoting social media in, in, in both normal businesses, digital, and entertainment. They're actually social media professionals. They're social media professionals, but it's a nonprofit organization that monthly has events, and um, there's everything from you know account executives to CEOs of companies. We just had the CEO of BetterWorks speak at, at the event, and you know, Zhao Yang is um, was the former. Um, he actually created Farmville in Mafia Wars for. And sold them to Zinger. Oh, that's great. So he actually is now the founder of Better Works with Paige Good Craig. For him. That's pretty cool. He, pretty cool. he infected the world with multiplayer games. He killed us. He just killed us. <laughs> that and virtual items, it's like, you know. We'll never be the yeah. same thanks it's, to him. Exactly. But now, I've known you for probably 10, 15 years. You've well, been, don't tell anyone. You've been, no, around, just kidding. Kidding. <laughs> you've, been, you've been around this world for a long time. I have. You have. So I, I actually said in another interview, I feel like an in, internet entrepreneur. No, but you're 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 at you're at the forefront of these things because this digital Thank Hollywood you. years ago was much different. It you was. Know, you know, when it was at the lows and it was very it's it's changed. Yeah, yeah we, we're changing with the market. I think the market's exploded this year, and, and it's nice to see so many different areas of the market exploding all where, at once. Where do you think is it? Is it video? Is it uh, is it network? Oh, the, the, I definitely the cross proliferation of devices is, is definitely where the growth is coming from and how the consumers are using the devices, whether it's in home or out of home, whether it's something they carry with them wherever they are. Mobile's, mobile's finally coming up with content and there's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of interactivity with that. I wouldn't even call it mobile anymore. It's like attached to humans. It's <laughs> right. Like something that's like a, of your personal. It's actually it's right, it's right there. It's right there. I feel like it's going to be embedded in parts of my body. So awesome. I really appreciate your views on digital media, um, especially with all of your background, traditional and, and social. Thank, Thank you very much.